Hi, I'm Lauren, and this is Brain Stuff. If you thought the ink in your home printer was getting expensive, imagine how much a cartridge would cost for a machine that can print human tissue. Yeah, that's a thing. If you're watching this right now, chances are pretty high that you have skin. It's a human being's largest organ, and if you stretched out the skin of an average adult, it would cover 22 square feet. That's about two square meters. That could make a lot of serial killer couture. But if we're getting into the business of actually making tissue, let's take a look at what skin is made of before we start printing it in our garage. At the top of skin is actually several layers of tightly packed cells called the epidermis. Its top layer is called the stratum corneum, which is filled with white blood cells and protects us against infections and diseases. The epidermis also contains melanocytes that make up the pigment, uh, or melanin, that gives skin its color. But you know what the weirdest thing about the epidermis is? It's mostly composed of dead skin cells that we're constantly shedding all over the place. In fact, it takes around 35 days for humans to fully shed our skin. Under the epidermis is well, the dermis. Uh, this is where your blood vessels are located, so if you're bleeding from a cut, your dermis is exposed. And you'll know it because this is also where your nerve endings send signals to your brain, like a heat, cold, pressure, and, yeah, pain. The dermis is also full of collagen, which gives your skin its firm durability. Uh, yep, that's the same stuff that people inject into their lips to make them permanently full and swollen. Except that collagen usually comes from cowhide. Yay. And collagen isn't even the grossest thing in the dermis. That award goes to an oily skin lubricant called sebum that's secreted out of the sebaceous glands. Sebum regulates body heat, waterproofs your skin, and protects it from bacterial and fungal infections, plus gives you pimples. Okay, so the deepest layer of skin is called the hypodermis. It's basically a subcutaneous tissue that connects our skin to our bones and muscles. It's composed of fat cells that keep us warm and pad our innards from blunt injuries. So let's go back to the part where I said your skin will heal over. What this means is that the proteins in your blood, like fibrin, work together with blood platelets and plasma to form what we call a scab. Under this disgusting protective layer, your skin starts to regenerate like Wolverine, but way slower. Scars happen when a skin wound is so deep that it cuts into the dermis layer. And scars aren't like normal skin tissue. They don't have hair or sweat glands, and they're more vulnerable to ultraviolet rays. So, okay, as cool as scars are, let's say we don't want them anymore. Uh, can we make skin to replace what's been damaged? The answer is not just yet. Uh, at least not seamlessly. However, under certain conditions, stem cells can be induced to become skin tissue. And the more we learn about stem cells, the better we get at replacing damaged cells with healthy ones. So how about it? What kind of scars do you fracking skin jobs have? I mostly have mental ones, uh, but if you have any physical ones, which one would you first want to print some human tissue to cover up? Let us know on Facebook or Twitter, and hey, check us out at brainstuffshow.com.